Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are still in Chapter 1, still talking about matter and change, and now we are going to delve into how we classify matter. So for starters, let's talk about mixtures. A mixture is a physical blend of two or more kinds of matter, each of which still retains its own identity and properties. And when we talk about mixtures, there are two kinds of mixtures. There are heterogeneous mixtures that are not uniform in composition. So heterogeneous mixture example, a salad. When I have a salad, I have my lettuce. I usually have two or three different kinds of lettuce. I might have some tomatoes. I might have some cucumbers. Um, I might have some croutons and I'm going to put some salad dressing on it. So that's a mixture and I can see that it's not uniform and I can also see all of the different pieces. Homogeneous mixtures are completely uniform in composition and they get a special name. They're referred to as a solution. And again, my example of a homogeneous solution is, um, sugar water. So if I were to hand you a glass, and let's say it's just your garden variety clear glass, and there's what looks like water in it, I could tell you, okay, that's a glass of water, or I could say that's sugar water, or that's salt water. And just looking at it, I can't see. And there's two reasons I can't see. Number one, it's a mixture, if it's sugar water or salt water. And it's a mixture that's completely uniform. And the second thing is that when we talk about this special case of a solution, it's mixed at a molecular level. And so I can't see if it's sugar water or salt water, for instance. I would have to do some other test, taste it if I told you it was okay to do that, or I would have to do some sort of analysis to determine what was there. And that's because it's homogeneous. And in the case of a solution, it's mixed at a molecular level. So you can't really see what's going on. So now we need to talk about pure substances. A pure substance is a homogeneous substance and it has a fixed composition. Pure substances differ from mixtures in the following ways. Every sample of a pure substance has exactly the same properties, and every sample of a pure substance has exactly the same composition. So again, a pure substance is homogeneous, and again, it's different from mixtures in that the pure substance has exactly the same properties throughout, and every sample is the same. Now, just by way of example, you could have a sample of sugar water, a glass of sugar water. There can be quite a bit of variability there depending on how much sugar. If I put one teaspoon in a glass of water as opposed to a cup of sugar in a glass of water, it's going to be a little bit different. So again, a pure substance is homogeneous with a fixed composition, and again, it is the same throughout the sample. So that leads us to talking about elements. And again, this is a brief introduction to the periodic table. Later on this year, um, sometime around October perhaps, we will talk about the periodic table at great length. Um, but for now, let's just start with an intro. So the periodic table um, is a table in which each square represents an element. Each square gives you the elements name, symbol, its atomic number, its atomic mass. The periodic tables that I will hand out to you have a few more things in addition to that. Um, they may give you um, the electron configuration, they may give you density, they may give you uh, specific heat capacity, a whole bunch of different uh, constants. But in general, each square on a periodic table will give you as a minimum the name of the element, the symbol for the element, its atomic number and its atomic mass. So the periodic table is um, organized according to two things, groups and periods. So groups are the vertical columns on the periodic table, and they also are sometimes called families. And the elements in a group 
are there because they have similar chemical properties. And then we talk about the periods, and those are the horizontal rows of elements in the periodic table. And again, we call them periods, and they go 1 through 7. There are two sets of elements uh, placed below the table, and those are called the lanthanide and actinide series. And then when we talk about the types of elements, there are three types of elements. There are metals, and those are elements that are good conductors of heat and electricity. There are nonmetals, those are elements that are, in general, poor conductors of heat and electricity. Um, and then there are metalloids, those are elements that have properties that are um, in between metals and nonmetals. They have properties of both. And then the last uh, designation that we talk about on the periodic table is the very last uh, group on the periodic table, and those are the elements in group 18, and they are generally very unreactive. So we talk about them as a separate kind of group because they don't behave like metals or metalloids. Um, they behave as nonmetals, but because they are so unreactive, we talk about them separately. So for now, that is all we're going to say about the periodic table. This is Ms. Augustine signing off, and congratulations, we made it through the first chapter.